The history of coffee. Nobody knows precisely how or when espresso was found, however there are numerous legends about its root. Espresso become worldwide can follow its legacy back hundreds of years to the old espresso woods on the Ethiopian level. There, legend says the goat herder Kaldi initially found the capability of these adored beans. The story goes that that Kaldi found espresso after he saw that in the wake of eating the berries from a specific tree, his goats turned out to be enthusiastic to the point that they would not like to rest around evening time. Kaldi announced his discoveries to the abbot of the neighborhood cloister, who made a beverage with the berries and found that it kept him alert through the extended periods of evening petition. The abbot imparted his revelation to different priests at the religious community, and information on the stimulating berries started to spread. As word moved east and espresso arrived at the Arabian promontory, it started an excursion which would bring these beans across the globe. The Arabian Peninsula. Espresso development and exchange started on the Arabian Peninsula. By the 15th century, espresso was being filled in the Yemeni area of Arabia and by the 16th century it was known in Persia, Egypt, Syria, and Turkey. Espresso was delighted in homes, yet in addition in the numerous public cafes, called Kava Kane, which started to show up in urban communities across the Near East. The ubiquity of the cafes was unrivaled and individuals frequented them for a wide range of social movement. Not exclusively did the benefactors drink espresso and participate in discussion, yet they additionally tuned into music, watched entertainers, played chess and kept current on the news. Cafes immediately turned out to be a particularly significant community for the trading of data that they were frequently alluded to as schools of the wise. With a large number of explorers visiting the blessed city of Mecca every year from everywhere the world, information on this wine of Araby started to spread. Espresso comes to Europe. European voyagers to the Near East brought back accounts of a surprising dim dark refreshment. By the 17th century, espresso had advanced toward Europe and was getting mainstream across the mainland. A few group responded to this new drink with doubt or dread, considering it the harsh innovation of Satan. The nearby ministry sentenced espresso when it came to Venice in 1615. The debate was incredible to the point that Pope Clement VIII was approached to intercede. He chose to taste the refreshment for himself prior to settling on a choice, and discovered the beverage so fulfilling that he gave it ecclesiastical endorsement. Notwithstanding such debate, cafes were rapidly turning out to be focuses of social movement and correspondence in the significant urban areas of England, Austria, France, Germany and Holland. In England, penny colleges jumped up, purported on the grounds that at the cost of a penny one could buy some espresso and participate in animating discussion. Espresso started to supplant the basic breakfast drink refreshments of the time, lager and wine. The individuals who drank espresso rather than liquor started the day alert and invigorated, and of course, the nature of their work was enormously improved. We like to think about this an antecedent to the advanced office espresso administration. By the mid-17th century, there were more than 300 cafés in London, a considerable lot of which pulled in similar supporters, including vendors, transporters, agents and specialists. Numerous organizations outgrew these particular cafés. Lloyd's of London, for instance, appeared at the Edward Lloyd's Coffee House. The New World. During the 1600s, espresso was brought to New Amsterdam, later called New York by the British. In spite of the fact that cafes quickly started to show up, tea kept on being the supported beverage in the New World until 1773, when the pilgrims rebelled against a substantial assessment on tea forced by King George III. The revolt, known as the Boston Tea Party, would everlastingly change the American drinking inclination to espresso. Espresso, the most loved beverage of the enlightened world. Thomas Jefferson. Ranches around the world. 
As interest for the drink kept on spreading, there was savage rivalry to develop espresso outside of Arabia. The Dutch at last got seedlings in the last 50% of the 17th century. Their first endeavors to plant them in quite a while fizzled, yet they were fruitful with their endeavors in Batavia, on the island of Java in what is presently Indonesia. The plants flourished and soon the Dutch had a beneficial and developing exchange espresso. They at that point extended the development of espresso trees to the islands of Sumatra and Celebes. Going to the Americas. In 1714, the mayor of Amsterdam introduced an endowment of a youthful espresso plant to King Louis XIV of France. The king requested it to be planted in the Royal Botanical Garden in Paris. In 1723, a youthful maritime official, Gabriel de Clou acquired a seedling from the king's plant. Notwithstanding a difficult journey, complete with shocking climate, a saboteur who attempted to obliterate the seedling, and a privateer assault, he figured out how to move it securely to Martinique. When planted, the seedling flourished, yet it's credited with the spread of more than 18 million espresso trees on the island of Martinique in the following 50 years. Considerably more staggering is that this seedling was the parent of all espresso trees all through the Caribbean, South and Central America. The renowned Brazilian espresso owes its reality to Francisco de Melo Palheta, who was sent by the ruler to French Guiana to get espresso seedlings. The French were not able to share, however the French governor's significant other, dazzled by his attractive features, gave him a huge bundle of roses before he left. Covered inside were sufficient espresso seeds to start what is today a billion-dollar industry. Teachers and voyagers, dealers and homesteaders kept on conveying espresso seeds to new grounds, and espresso trees were planted around the world. Ranches were set up in eminent tropical timberlands and on tough mountain-high countries. A few yields prospered, while others were brief. New countries were set up on espresso economies. Fortunes were made and lost. Before the finish of the 18th century, espresso had gotten one of the world's most productive fair crops. After unrefined petroleum, espresso is the most looked for item on the planet. Five attempts to ban coffee in history. 1. Mecca. Espresso was prohibited in Mecca in 1511, as it was accepted to animate extremist reasoning and hanging out, the lead representative idea it may join his resistance. Java additionally got unfavorable criticism for its utilization as an energizer. Some Sufi groups would pass around a bowl of espresso at memorial services to remain alert during petitions. 2. Italy. At the point when espresso showed up in Europe in the 16th century, ministers squeezed for it to be prohibited and marked satanic. In any case, Pope Clement VIII took a taste, pronounced it delectable, and even joked that it ought to be purified through water. On the strength of this ecclesiastical gift, cafes quickly jumped up all through Europe. 3. Constantinople. After Murad IV guaranteed the Ottoman seat in 1623, he immediately denied espresso and set up an arrangement of sensible punishments. The discipline for a first offense was a beating. Anybody got with espresso a subsequent time was sewn into a calfskin sack and tossed into the waters of the Bosporus. 4. Sweden. Sweden gave espresso the hatchet in 1746. The public authority additionally prohibited, espresso stuff, with cops seizing cups and dishes. Ruler Gustav III even arranged indicted killers to drink espresso while specialists checked what amount of time the cups of Joe required to kill them, which was incredible for convicts and exhausting for the specialists. 5. Prussia. In 1777, Frederick the Great of Prussia gave a declaration asserting lager's predominance over espresso. He contended that espresso meddled with the country's lager utilization, obviously trusting a regal explanation would make Prussians excited for an educational mix every morning. Frederick's assertion announced, his majesty was raised on brew, clarifying why he thought breakfast drinking was a smart thought. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to life is often if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.